come before you to love each other and to love those we don't know. Right now, Father, we lift up the Sunday school teacher for you yes, now, to you right now, Father. We know you've anointed to study, now we pray that you anoint the word that's coming out of this mouth. We pray that you touch and bless him, Father. May his mind be clear and his heart be pure. We also lift up our pastor right now, and we pray that you continue to prepare him for this afternoon sermon. We thank and we praise you in your precious name we pray. Amen. 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 Good morning, everybody. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. We're in the spring quarter, but it feels like winter. Amen. <laughs> we're glad to see everyone here this morning. Amen. Amen. All right, we'd like to open up with this morning's spring quarter, Unit 1, Calls for the Margin of Society. We're on Lesson 3, March 19, 2023. Our devotional read will come from Isaiah 44, 1 through 8. Our background scripture will come from John 4, 1 through 42. Our print passage will come from John 4, 7 through 15, 28 through 30, 39 through 41. Our key verse that we are reading in unison will come from John 4, 39, King James Version. Our lesson topic for today is different but the same. Our lesson aims to tell us as a result of experiencing this lesson, we the participants should be able to prepare and compare societal barriers in Jesus' time to the barriers that exist in the church today. Confess their tendencies to allow differences to hinder relationships and offer hospitality to someone who is different from themselves. This lesson matter, matters because people create barriers that can hinder relationships. What can be done to eliminate these barriers? Jesus was able to break the relationship barriers with the Samaritan woman, offering her living water leading to eternal life. During history, our lesson and focus tell us, during history, humanity learns to erect barriers to protect themselves from hostile forces and often isolate themselves from the influence of outsiders. The Great Wall of China, for example. However, history annuals prove that neither of these two reasons led to success. Military strategies and weapons were developed to break down or overrun walls, no matter their height or strength. Unfortunately, erecting barriers was not limited to physical defense purposes. Humanity living close to others create barriers, isolating, oppressing, and marginalizing groups, even within similar cultures. Humanity inherit fallen natural methodological, methodically, and purposely led to various overt and covert societal barriers that exist still that still exist today. The adverse effects of overt racism, systemic racism, systemic discrimination, institutionalized segregation, religious prejudice, and racial profiling still plagues this nation and world. The victims, ethnic minorities women, children, and social outcasts experience ostracism, violent crimes against them, rejection, and disenfranchisement. Regrettably, there are those among the faith community guilty of perpetuating societal barriers that marginalize the very, the very groups needed to experience salvation and Jesus' love towards others. John's account of Jesus' encounter with a Samaritan woman provides an example to em emulate bre breaching these kinds of barriers to reach the outcast of society with the good news of the gospel. Mm -hmm. Our biblical context. The early Christian tradition of attributing other authorships of the four gospels to the apostle John. He is not mentioned by name in his gospel, but repeatedly refers to himself as a disciple who Jesus loved. And analyzed for the content of chapter 20 and 21, verified that John was a dis disciple and the book author. Some biblical scholars date John's gospel to after the composition of the Synthic gospel, but before his writing 1, 2, and 3, John or Revelation, John's purpose for writing was evangelistic and apolog apologetic. And he apologetic. stated, Apologetic. He stated in John 20, 31, These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In physically, John wrote so his readers will understand why they needed saving faith and believe in Jesus, assure eternal life. Apologetic, apologetically. Apologetically, his purpose was to convince his readers that Jesus was incarnated God, <coughs> and the Messiah, and the Savior of the world. Jesus' encounter with the 
Samaritan. Samaritan women before John primary apologetic theme that Jesus is the Messiah and the Son of God. This meeting also demonstrates that Christ's love for humanity has no boundaries, does not discriminate and encompasses all. In his sight, all are different but the same regarding his concerns for them and their need for salvation. All right, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you for reading that. Now let's look at our uh, devotional reading, which comes from Isaiah 44, 1 through 8. Yet now hear, O Jacob, my servants, and Israel, whom I have chosen. Thus says the Lord that made thee and formed thee from the womb, which will help thee. Fear not, O Jacob, my servants, and thy just run, just run, just run, just run, whom I have chosen. For I will pour water upon him that is thirsty, and flood upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed, and my blessing upon thy offspring. And they shall spring up as among the graves, as little by the water pool. One shall, one shall say, I am Lord, and another shall shall call himself by the name of Jacob, and another shall strive with his hand into the Lord. And surname. And surname himself by the name of Israel. Thus says the Lord, the King of Israel, and his redeemed, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and besides me there is no God. And who, as I shall call, and shall declare it and set it in order for me, since I appointed the ancient people. And the things that are coming and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Have not I told thee from that time, and have declared it. Yet are even my witness, is there is a God besides me? Yeah, there is no God, I know not any. Many of the Samaritans of that city who believed on him for the sand of the woman, which shall survive, he told me all that I did. Once again, our lesson topics is different, but the same will return our lesson over to our teacher, Dick and Sam. Our lesson this morning is different, but the same. I think our, the writers look in how and it, it, we're different on the outward appearance. But God see us as the same. And we are one that accept him to become part of that family. So we're different in our uniqueness. But we're all the same. Mm -hmm. We thank you all for, again, we're going to go into our lesson this morning. Uh, is uh, John the 4th. Chapter 7 through ninth verse. And for our first outline, it's confronting societal barriers. We ask someone to read those verses, then come back and read that first paragraph. Yes, son of the woman of Samaria, the strong one, Jesus said unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away into the city to buy me. Then says the woman of Samaria unto him, How is that thou? Being a Jew, ask me drink of me, which am, I, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. The first three verses of John 4 introduce Jesus' second long interview in John's Gospel. The first was a Nicodemus, and the second one was a Samaritan woman. The difference between the two is that Nicodemus sought Jesus, but Jesus purposely sought this woman. Thus, his reason for intentionally going through Samaria was to be. Is expeditious and spiritual. Expeditiously, Jesus left Judea for Galilee to prevent an escalation of public rivalry between he and his cousin John the Baptist. Spiritually, his decision was because he had a divine appointment there to continue fulfilling his mission of seeking and saving society's outcasts. He met humanly weary after his journey from Judea, the Sinkar and Samaria. Jesus sat by Jacob's wheel, located about half a mile south of the city. As Jesus sat there, tired and thirsty, a woman of Samaria showed up to draw water. Two things are unusual about her arrival. One, it was not the usual time women came to draw water. 
she arrived at midday, but the customary time was in the evening. Second, she traveled a long distance, purposely disregarding water sources closer to her village. Unsuspectedly, she too had a divine appointment. Jesus initiated their meeting by requesting a drink of water. His simple request began dismantling the social, the social barrier that separated them, discriminatory social customs and racial prejudices. First, cultural etiquette forbade men from speaking to women, even their <coughs> wives in public. Amen. Thank you, Naisha. Confronting societal barriers. You know, societal barriers is just how society looks at things. And Tehran wrote, read that John wrote this that you might believe, that we might believe. The lesson to, uh, in context that John Gospel is unique among the other three accounts because it's containing precise statement of its purpose. The deed have been written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Okay? Now, confronting societal barriers. Now, it's read there two key points. And we're going to come back. She said it was something unusual about this woman arrival at Jacob's well. So Jesus left Judea for Galilee by the way of Samaria for two specific reasons. First, the Pharisees attempt to instigate a competition between Jesus and John about John the Baptist. John had his disciples, his followers, and Jesus had his, and, and the Pharisees were attempting to instigate a competition. Okay? And said, so therefore, to prevent open rivalry between their followers, Jesus chose to leave the area. Second, he chose a chosen route through Samaria by divine design. Because he was always in sync with his father's will, he foreknew that he would encounter an immoral woman and lead her to receive salvation. Uh, by doing so, he would continue to fulfill his mission of seeking to save the outcasts of society prove that God is no respect of person and break down the societal barriers that marginalize them. Now, in uh, uh, verse 7, it said, There come a woman of Samaria to draw water. And Jesus said unto her, Give me a drink. For his uh, disciples uh, were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Now, when I read that, John wrote specifically that his disciple was there. And I, and, and, and I was thinking about that, even last night I was thinking about that, that for John to pin the importance of his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat, it signifies that there's something special about their being absent. Now, have you ever tried to witness to somebody about God and somebody else was around? They're going to always try to distract, talk about something other than what your purpose is, or what you want to talk to that person. So that could have been it. The Bible don't say that, but but for John to pin that they wasn't there because the disciple was not at the level where Jesus was about understanding. The disciple still had this, this societal barrier where they thought that the Jews should not deal with the Samaritans. In other words, they had a prejudice among them because when Jesus was going, he said, I must have need to go through Samaria. They didn't want to go through Samaria because they didn't want to go. But by Jesus telling them that, they went on, and you know, he said, uh, they were Jews. They didn't want to deal with it. He said, and then said the woman of Samaria unto him, how is it that thou being a Jew, 
as drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria. For the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. Now, the, the, the prejudice and the, the uh, separation goes way back. In 2 King, the 17th chapter and, and uh, the 24th verse, it tells us that now this was when they were going in uh, captivity. And the king of Assyria mm -hmm. bought men from Babylon and from uh, Qatar and from Ava and from Hamath and from Seth of Barian and places, placed them in the city of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the city thereof. 25 said, and so it was that at the beginning of their dwelling there that they feared not the Lord. Okay? Therefore the Lord sent lions among them which slew some of them. In other words, the Samaritan uh, was placed in this place uh, other than the children of Israel and it said they did not believe God. Mm. Also, the Samaritan was mixed breeds. Did you hear all the different ones that said they placed there? Five different, I believe about five different ones. It said uh, from Babylon to Qatar, Avon, Hamas, and Sepharim, and, and from uh, Samaria. So when you get a, what they call a melting pot, it said they placed the men, okay? So when they placed the men in a city, in the cities, after a while, you're going to have some different cultures, okay? So that's how the Samaritan became uh, mixed races, mixed races, and the Jews had a prejudice against that, okay? Now, and they said they had no dealing for, for that reason and, and for the reason that they did not believe in the God of Israel, okay? Now, he said, now, for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritan. Now, they had no dealing with them because of their disbelief. In the book of Ezra, fourth chapter and three, you'll find that there was the, the, uh, the uh, Israelites were building a temple and they wanted to help them know we, we, we don't need y'all to help. We're going to build it ourselves. Mm -hmm. So they would definitely not uh, want to have any type of relationship with the Samaritan. But by God, by Jesus going through there, he's going to take down this social barrier that the disciples and a lot of the others have built up. You know, and, 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 and it's just true sometimes, some, like some of us today. You know, just because we don't sin like we used to. We die on everybody else that's been so wrong. And we forget that the Bible says there are none perfect but the Father. No, not one. And we put up barriers. Okay? And see, now, we're going to go on. He said, now, uh, he had bought this, and, and they were looking at it, and it's very important to notice that they were not there. And, and the witness was, when they uh, began to commerce about this, and, and uh, act, the 10th chapter, 10 and 28, we can go on. It said, and he said, Paul, remember, this is show again that, that this uh, racism of discrimination they had, and he, Paul, said unto them, you know how it is unlawful, it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or to come unto a one of another nation. He said, but God has showed me I should not call any man common or unclean. Mm -hmm. Now, see, God had to work with Paul for Paul to take that social barrier down. So if God had to work with Paul, God had to work with us. Amen. Amen. Because we can we can be we can be the same color and we'll we'll create barriers. That's right. In the, in the community, in the churches, or whatever, we can create a barrier, but that's where we need to be led by God. Amen. Okay? Now let's move on with our second outline. We'll come back and, and, and kind of work on this a little bit more. Okay, our second outline is confronting spiritual blindness. This is uh, 10 through the 15th verse. Jesus answered and said unto her, If 
Thou knewest the gift of God, and who it is that saved to thee, give me to drink. Thou wouldst ask of him, and he would give thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, hast, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From thence then hast thou that living water. Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which, has, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself, and his children, and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of this water shall thirst again, but whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst, but the water that I shall give him shall be in him. Sorry, the water that I give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus ignored the woman's question and turned the tables on her. His reply was designed to cause her to think. He diplomatically placed her in the position of the thirsty one. He informed the woman that if she knew who he was, what the gift of God was, and what he meant by living water, she would ask him for a drink instead. However, her response revealed the depths of her spiritual blindness. She failed to comprehend two significant truths. His reference to living water was spiritual, not physical, and that he was indeed greater than Jacob, the revered ancestor of both Jews and Samaritans. She most likely understood his reference to living water as water flowing in an underground spring that fed the well. She pointed out that this well was deep and implied that he thought too highly of himself as if he were more significant than Jacob, who gave the well, who gave them the well drank from it along with his children and watered his livestock. Although she wondered what he had to offer regarding living water, her question anticipated a negative answer. She doubted if this stranger possessed the ability to provide what he offered. Again, Jesus chose not to respond to the question raised by the woman. Instead, he refocused her attention on the issue at hand. Amen. Thank you, Lon. Mm -hmm. Confronting spiritual blindness. Now, remember that there was two unusual points. Time of day she went and her being a more woman to be talking to Jesus at a public way. Okay? Now, when we go back and look at verse 9, he says, for the Jews have no dealing with the Samaritans. In the end. Then it said, and Jesus said unto her, if thy new gift. Now, she was still talking about, we don't both even be talking. Jesus just brushed at her side. And he answered and said unto her, if thy new the gift of God, and who it is that say to thee, give me to drink, thy would have asked of him and he would have given thee living water okay one thing we want to understand we want us to understand is what is this gift of God yes Jesus is a gift that can lead us until eternal life so now she read that he had to change her focus. Mm -hmm. And we were talking about yesterday that a lot of time, the only thing that this woman had to do was listen. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of times we get so distracted about other things mm -hmm. that we fail to listen to God's word. Lord. So now, And Jesus answered and said unto her, if thy knew mm -hmm. the gift of God. Now, she said, he telling her, you don't you don't quite understand. She, being a Samaritan woman, she still was hung up that the Jews don't deal with the Samaritan. Mm -hmm. But she needs to understand the gift. And then he said, and who it is that say, unt, say to thee, give me to drink. Thou would have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. Now, 
living water. She was talking about physical water. Physical water is important. But physical water can't do what living water can do. Let me tell you, I, I remember some years ago I was sitting up there and I was I just felt bad. Couldn't think clear like my memory was foggy. And some say, you hadn't even drank any water. I hadn't really drank any water in two days. I was drinking Sprite. I was drinking Coke. I was drinking tea. But I hadn't drank any water. Now that physical water is important for our body. Okay? For our skin tone. Y'all y'all know. I know the ladies know. All of that is important. But that physical water cannot do what the living water does. Now, he said, now, if you knew who had, and asked him, he would have given thee living water. Now, the Bible talks about, in Isaiah 12 and 3, he said, therefore, with joy, you shall draw water out of the well of salvation. When you think about drawing water out the well of salvation, we got to think. Now, we ain't talking about the physical water. She was still thinking about the physical water. You don't have nothing to draw with. But Jesus was telling that you don't understand that when you get your bucket, bucket full of this water, you are first again. If you will accept this living water, you want to have some things that are going to stir up in you that the physical water can't handle, Amen. that can't cover. Mm -hmm. Now, he said, what is this gift? In the book of Romans uh, 8 and 32, the gift is God. This gift is Jesus. He said, he that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things. You know, everybody know what John 3, 16 says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. That's a gift. Mm -hmm. That's a gift. We can receive that gift, but what we got to do is change our mindset. And, and you know what? Until this woman began to listen, right. that's when she because she was still comparing you the well and you ain't got nothing to draw with, okay? And then verse 11, it said, and the woman said unto him, sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then has thou that living water? A comparison again, are thou greater than our father Jacob? which gave us the well and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle. Now, she's still blind. Mm -hmm. Jesus did change the conversation about the water that you're trying to get and the water that I'm trying to give you. See, she's still spiritually blind mm -hmm. because she's still looking at the situation, thinking about the water in the well, and he didn't change the conversation. Okay, now, and Jesus said, un, and Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. I still see her sitting there. What is he talking about? <laughs> what is he talking about? Mm. I'm, he came up first, you know how he come up and asked her for a drink of water, then he changed the whole dynamic of it. He's no more interested in that water that she got in her bucket in the well. But he's trying to give her something and tell her that if you drink that water, you're going to thirst. The Bible said there are some that thirst for righteousness. Some people that really want to know the truth. Okay? Now, the Bible also tells us that if we know the truth, the truth will do what? Set us free. So if we, if we drink of that living water, we no longer perishing for the truth. Because I just read to you where it said, therefore, if you draw from the well out of the well of salvation. Sometimes when you just want to know something, you just got to be quiet mm -hmm. and listen to God. You know what that is? Right. Drawing from the well. Right. That's drawing from the well. Okay? Now, in Jesus' 
answered and said unto her, Whosoever drink of this water shall thirst again. But whosoever drink of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water springing up into eternal life, everlasting life. Mm -hmm. John 6 and 35 said now, and Jesus said unto them, talking this is a different situation, I am the bread of life, and he that cometh to me shall never hunger, and he that believe on me shall never thirst. So Jesus will tell him, and he's a, he's a, he would, I know what he wanted to say, what a woman, me, receive me, accept me. Comparing Jacob to Jesus and, 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 and you ain't got nothing to draw with and, 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 and you can't get this water and all of this here. He said, if you knew who asked you for a drink of water. Mm -hmm. Okay? Sometimes we'll let who we are get in the way of our salvation. Mm -hmm. Now what I mean about that, there's some people think they're so big and mighty that they don't even need God. And God got a way of taking us all the way down to the foundation Amen. and realize we can do nothing without him. Amen. Okay? Now, verse 15, and the woman said unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. Now, Jesus said unto her in John 4 and 16, Jesus said unto her, go and call thy husband and come here. Now, look at that shift. This is what I got now. This, this is Sam. She was talking about water, and the woman said unto her, him, sir, give me this water that I may, that I thirst not, neither come here to draw. But then, in it's not in here. But the next one said that Jesus told her, go and call your husband and come here. See the shift? Now what I get from that, and y'all are welcome to share what you get from it. What I get from that is that a lot of times we want what God got to give us. But we don't want to give nothing in return. See, what Jesus told her, now, listen, he stopped talking about the water and told her to go and get your husband. In other words, there were some things that she had to clean up. And when they talked about, I don't have a husband, she said, no, you don't. You done had five. And the one you got ain't your. In other words, before you drink of this water, there's some things that you got to clean up. We want God give, uh -huh. but we don't want to clean up nothing. Ain't right. hey, that something? Mm -hmm. See how he just shifted? Yeah. Now, first time meeting Jesus at Jacob Well, and Jesus was profound to tell her things that now she, her eyes began, began to come open. Mm -hmm. And she understand that this is somebody that know me. Okay? He shifted from that. And he said that neither that I come here, she is now believing for the gift. She now believing for the gift. In John 7 and 38, he that believe on me, as the scripture has said, out of his belly shall flow rivers of living water. Mm -hmm. Now the woman have left from that. Now she's believing. So guess what she's doing? Getting ready to do. <laughs> witness. There you go. She began to witness. Right. And, and, and there's something about it, Tony, that when he told her to go get a husband, she went and then she went. And now get this now. She was a woman that the guy knew. She'd had five husbands. And the scripture says she went and told the men mm -hmm. and said, come see a man yes. <laughs> that have told me everything I've ever done. The witnesses. <laughs> Once we began to, to come into and accept him, we pull out witnesses. You can't just 
says sit still on it. You've got to tell somebody how good God is to you. She couldn't help it. And, and it says she left the water pot. She came there for water, but forget that water. I got the living water. She gone now. And she gone to witness to those in Samaria. The people that had no dealing with Jews. Jews had no dealing with them. But Jesus comes and he breaks down that societal barrier. He opened up where they could, that anyone that, no matter what race, nationality that we are, if we willing to accept Jesus, the giver of the living water, that we won't have to thirst again, we have a way. We have a way to do it. Okay? Let's go and, and look at our final outline, and then we're going to get the pastor to come on and catch this up. <clears throat> Hearing, seeing, believing. Okay? 28, 29, 30, 31. The woman, then, 39, 40. Go ahead, the woman then left her water pot and went her and went her way into the city and said to the man, Come, see a man which told me all the things that I ever did. Is <clears throat> this is not this the Christ? Then they went out to the city and came unto him. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the for the saying of the woman which testified, He told me all that I ever did. So when the Samaritans were coming to him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Mm -hmm. And many more believed because of his own word. Amen. Thank you, Nikki. You're welcome. Mm -hmm. Hearing, seeing, <clears throat> and believing. Now, this woman bought a dynamic move. Mm -hmm. So Jesus' encounter with the Samaritan woman concluded with her eagerly sharing her experience with her village and encouraging others to come see him for themselves. Why she left her water party is an open congestion. <laughs> However, it is vital that her encounter supplied courage to disregard cultural taboos, mm -hmm. societal barriers of her day, to invite the men of her village to come to see this stranger who supernaturally Revealed every detail of her personal life. Mm -hmm. Now, in between these passages of scripture, read the conversation of what happened. That's why she knew that Jesus had dealt down and told her stuff that she thought <coughs> was in the closet. Mm -hmm. Nobody knew about. I, I did that, but nobody knew about it. He had. Because I like what she said. Come see a man. <laughs> <laughs> told me everything I ever did. <laughs> everything I ever did. Can you imagine <coughs> it's a marriage oh. and five husbands? <laughs> this woman probably had her lots in her closet. <laughs> <laughs> but Jesus told her all about it. Yeah. It wasn't too late for her. It wasn't too late for her. Just because she was a more woman, it wasn't too late for her. Because when she accepted him and listened and began to witness, she did a great move. Mm -hmm. We were talking about it yesterday. The Bible said faith comes by hearing, yeah. yes. hearing yes. the word of God. Amen. And we're never too bad that God can, can't use us. Mm -hmm. We're never too bad that God can't save us. But one thing, we got to be honest with ourselves. Mm -hmm. It don't say she said that, oh, no, 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 no. Try to hide what she done. She didn't only tell Jesus. She went and told everybody else in town. He even told me everything I ever did. <laughs> <laughs> Not some, but everything. He said, the woman left her water pots and went her way into the city and said unto the men, Come see a man which told me all things that I ever did, if not this to Christ. Mm. Now, the Samaritan heard about, and she asked him, you know, about the Christ, and they talked about worship and all that in the beginning, who can worship in this mountain and all this here and all, and Jesus told about all of that. So it now the Jews thought that the Samaritan 
Then they weren't even worthy of salvation. Oh, they so so bad. They so mixed up that they are not worthy of salvation. Mm -hmm. But Jesus came to seek and to save those which are lost. Right. It don't matter what nationality you are, your race or your color or whatever it is. That don't matter with him. Mm -hmm. Only thing that he wants us to do is accept Jesus Christ as God's son. Lord. Partake of that living water. He said now and and <clears throat> Then they come out of the city and came unto him. And many of the Samaritans of that city believed on him for the saying of who? Of the woman. Okay, you see that? They, they, they came out to see Jesus, but they went because of what she said. Amen. See how important our witnesses is? I'm telling you one thing, and, and I learned this. When, when a person wants to, it's a person approach you and say, well, I, I want to talk to you about something. You know, I've been dealing with it. And if it's having to do with their, their spiritual walk, talk with them when you have the time. Talk to you when then when you can sit down one-on-one -on -one with them. Because Jesus talked to this woman and them other guy was going into town to get some meat. All right. When they got back, Jesus wasn't even home. <laughs> Anybody gave him some meat? The priority was the must need to go through Samaria. Samaria was that Jesus knew. He, he's all knowing. He knew that that woman was going to be at Jacob Well. Yes, she changed the taboo and went there at an unusual time of day. And they had that one on one confrontation. And I can imagine, you know, a lot of times people do things. I'm thinking about that on the way over. A lot of times people do things. They're not proud of it. Mm. And they just want to clean up. Mm -hmm. You know? So she was probably excited. So when he told her, she was glad to share the good news. Okay? And he said, and so when the Samaritan came unto him, they besought him that he would tarry with them, and he abode there two days. Two days. Now, this, this Samaritan woman had to do was to listen. Okay? You always understand that. Just listen. She could have went back and forth with him all day about, and you ain't got nothing to draw no water. I'm going to get my water and go home and study about you. You know how we do. Mm -hmm. But she listened. Mm -hmm. Romans 10 and 17. So then, faith come by hearing. Yes. Hearing the word of God. She took time to listen. When she took time to listen, she could understand that this is no ordinary person. Mm -hmm. The Spirit will speak, and you know that it's the Spirit speaking. Y'all believe that? Mm -hmm. You know the Spirit. I know people say, oh, you've been talking to my wife. My wife told you that. No, <laughs> the Spirit will speak. Yeah. And saying. We as believers have to learn to have a time with God so God can speak to us. Mm -hmm. Throw away all the other stuff and listen mm -hmm. to God's word. Because God's word still speak off the page. It still speak off the page. But we, we can't be clouding, you know, and what Jesus was able to do was to get her to a point that she was focused on what he was saying. Look how it came out of start. We, well, he talked about the water. He ain't got nothing to draw, blah, 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 all this here. After a while, he, he hit a point with her. And she said, give me this water. <laughs> give me this water. And when she did, he gave her that water. And she did a great move. Mm -hmm. She did through her witness. Mm -hmm. And I can imagine when she got back into town, they said, it's something like, here come over, y'all know what, but she got a good message this time. Right. <laughs> we may look different, but we're the same in God's eyes. Amen. 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 We're gonna let the pastor come in. Oh Lord, Lord. What a what a word from the Lord today. Amen. Amen. I don't know about you, but it's healing here this morning. Yes. Just by the testimony of those 
that received this water. Mm -hmm. Amen. We're, we're so grateful and so thankful for those who had a year hear what the Spirit is talking mm -hmm. to us mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. I'm so excited because I know God is real. Yeah. 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 He's speaking right before our eyes mm -hmm. today. Mm -hmm. And uh, everything that's falling in place. Yeah. And he loved every last one of us. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But there is some refining in us Amen. that we can't do. That's right. And that is once you open up confession, then God can do his work. Amen. A lot of people trying to clean up themselves, they can't do it. Mm -hmm. But if you open up and God know you, that's when the healing come. Mm -hmm. That's when the process came. Amen. But we are staying for our closing prayer. Amen. Dear God, help us follow our same desire for a demonstrated loving, compassionate behavior towards yes. those on the margins of society in our communities and beyond. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.